And the truth is, if you want it bad enough, and this is with anything, you'll find a way to make it happen. If not, you'll find an excuse, you'll find a way to delay it, but if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. And hey guys, my name is Goran, I'm a digital nomad, I'm a freelance in digital marketing and social media management, and today we'll make the first interview I have with Gareth Leonard from Travel Deeper. Today's the start of my series to talk with people who are already living the life they've always wanted to have. They have followed their dreams, passion. They've already been through the whole difficult process I'm currently in and you probably are very interested to be in very soon. So that's going to be very interesting for you. I hope so. Hi guys, I'm Gareth Leonard, a travel YouTuber, entrepreneur. I've been traveling around the world for about 14 years. And I, I, you're not wearing sunglasses, I'm wearing sunglasses. I swear I'm not trying to be too cool, it's just the sun's coming in, you know? So, actually a very, very cool thing is, I have been following Gareth for years, years on YouTube, and even in my first video, I will show you right now, I have said that I actually would really love to work one day with one of the mentioned people. Gareth is my first guest here. We are traveling for two years, uh, two years, <laughs> for two weeks through Croatia, and he will have an amazing series. I will link it down below in the description as well. So, thank you very much, Gareth, Absolutely. for being my first start on my series. We're about halfway through our adventures through uh, Croatia at the moment and Goran has been absolutely incredible getting us through this entire country starting in Zagreb all the way down to Dubrovnik and today we're in his hometown here in Cepikuce. Cepikuce. <laughs> yeah, look at this beautiful background and I'm telling you something, no tourist has ever been here because there's nothing to see. Okay, let's start with a very easy question. Yes. Tell me more about yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? Whew. You have already made a short, short introduction. So, my name is Gareth Leonard. As I mentioned, I'm a travel YouTuber, videographer, uh, travel blogger and also entrepreneur. I've been traveling around the world for about 14 years. Started way back in 2009 before anybody had a camera and before it was really popular and started actually with writing on a travel blog and then about 2014 I realized everybody and their mother was having a travel blog and I knew video was the way to tell a story in in the fashion that I wanted to and also it was uh, honestly it was a higher barrier to entry meaning not a lot of people were willing to go through and the less process competition, no? and less competition exactly so I switched over to video and also because I didn't love writing so I wanted to just tell stories easier meaning directly to the camera not to say that video is easier but i wanted to tell a story more directly so i started really focusing on video and now 14 years later i've you know traveled and lived around the world and i do this full time and make a great living doing it and it's it's my passion and it's my career and when you can mix those two together that's that's my understanding of the, living the dream yeah, that's very great. And he has more than 500,000 subscribers on YouTube and several hundred thousand followers on other social platforms. So you have been actually very successful. Thank you. And my second question, you have already kind of answered it because I wanted to ask you, when did you start uh -huh. and why did you do it? So maybe just a little bit deeper yeah, into yeah. why, what was the reason, why did you stick to it? Because it was probably very, very hard back then as there wasn't so much money in the industry and... No money, no education, no information. There's Now there's so many digital nomad platforms and, and kind of case studies, you know, people who have gone through it and lived it and you can look to them as inspiration. And back then there was maybe a handful of us, maybe 10, 15 people that were actually writing on a travel blog and talking about it. Now the expat lifestyle has been going on forever, but this is a new digital nomad and a new labeling of it. And expats have, you know, forever gone and lived abroad. But for me, I was working on a startup, a college textbook startup, and I've told this story many times, but it's so relevant to so many people because my heart wasn't in it. You know, I wasn't in love with the work that I was doing. I was living for someone else's dream. Exactly, yeah. And we decided to start trying to get ready to sell this company. And we said, I, I can go in one direction and be, you know, be a, a marketing director and, and go through a, a very successful life. As always we, be working for someone else. Always working for and someone else. And not be able like, to grow financially, personally, like way, but not, not as fast. As you can do if you work for yourself, right? Exactly. So one morning I went to a coffee shop and I said, I have to figure out my life. And I want to do something bold and different. I, I didn't have any strings attached. I, you know, I just had some student loan debt. It was time for me to make a big move. I was 25 years old and I booked a one-way ticket to Buenos Aires, Argentina with a goal of living in a country for one year that was foreign to me, learning a foreign language and trying to find a local job. Those are my big three missions to try to 
make this this year, which was really the goal. My goal was to live abroad for one year. That's it. So that was a big step out of your comfort zone. New continent, the new biggest. country, new language, new jobs, everything, no? I booked a one-way ticket, arrived in Buenos Aires, went into my hostel, put my bags down, sat on the bed, and started crying. I said, what the hell am I doing with my life? Like, what did I just do? I just made the stupidest decision ever. I couldn't talk to anybody in the airport. I couldn't talk to anybody in the streets. This is before Uber and Google Maps yeah. and, you know, uh, Google Translate. He's not that old. He's not that old. I'm not, I'm not that old. I just started, no? yeah, 2009. <laughs> so it, was, like, it seems like a long time ago to many people. Yeah. But yeah, so that was the idea. I, I, I was way out of my comfort zone and it was a struggle. The year was a struggle because I refused to have English speaking friends. I refused to go to English speaking places. I found a local job bartending, a local girlfriend, uh, local roommates. And slowly but surely, I built this life that I was so proud of because I was living for me and I was doing what I was truly passionate about. So, two very serious questions, yeah. now one less serious. Yeah. Gareth, if you would be a stripper, what would be your name? <laughs> <laughs> My stripper name, Excalibur, of course. Why do you know that so fast? Sword in the Stone. Obviously. <laughs> Excalibur, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Instagram and YouTube name for his accounts. So, Gareth, when you started out, you have already mentioned when you arrived to Argentina, you were crying, you yeah, didn't yeah. know what to do, how to do. How did you feel during all the process? What were your biggest obstacles in your journey when you have started out? To me, it was language learning. Language, I, I'm not easy with languages. It, takes me, it took me a long time to pick up Spanish. Um, I, I would struggle. You know, I, I found the local job, bartending, and I was the only person in there that spoke uh, English most of the time. And I'd come home with just migraines or headaches and I'd go to bed and I'd just be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And something deep in me is like, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pushing. And I, I'd want to go out with local friends and I would just sit there and they would talk and, you know, I would be chimed in every now and then with somebody saying something in English, you know, one or two words. And I'd say, oh yeah. So that was the most difficult thing is, Trying to live like a local without speaking a local language, that was a real struggle for me. But then once it started clicking, man, there's no better feeling than, than to be able to speak to an, a, a native in a, their native language. That's yeah, that's so true. The best. That's very true, yeah. And a very interesting question I also think for most of the viewers, um, I can also relate to the question is, when you have started out, did you have the support of family and friends or have you felt like more alone on this journey? So it's funny actually, it went, it went in a curve. The first year, everybody was very supportive. He's gonna go away for one year, you know, find himself and, and come back. And come back, yeah, exactly, career, right? exactly. So it's funny, cause yeah, my mother, grandmother, you know, my, my grandfather's always been supportive of it, but my grandma's like, okay, that's nice. But it was the second trip. It was when I moved to Medellin, Colombia, that's when everyone started getting concerned. Because they were like, they didn't want to come back. Yeah, and yeah. they realized you want to do something else. So that's You're losing out on time, career, yeah, yeah. And money and everything. No? Yeah, relationships, you know, having everybody at my age, it was 26 when I came back. So everybody my age was, you know, getting married. I was coming home for weddings. Uh, my sister was having children. You know, everybody was getting the second, you know, right? You get the college job and then you get that second job as regional promotion, manager and promotion like that, yeah. so everybody was starting to get that second promotion and seeing a career path and me i was just crumbling all of that and moving to colombia so the first trip funny enough was very supportive then it became a little bit less each but time. then it became like of a kind of a long-term dream right yeah. another project and not just for like a gap year yeah so then yeah, i yeah. set a goal of five years to live through latin america live volunteer and work and as year by year went by and I started picking up steam as far as advertisers and as far as the, the notoriety and the news and things like that, different press articles, the BBC, CNBC, things like that, that's when the support came back. And, and my grandma was probably the, the last holdout and I had to get a, an article published in my local newspaper, even, if, even with BBC featuring me in Brazil and CNBC talking about my lifestyle. It wasn't until my local newspaper... The local newspaper in a place of 5,000 people, guys. If you want to win your family over, contact your local newspaper first, have them do a story on you, and then... I still have to do that. Everybody will be good. Yeah, that's the only way. So, guys, also, if you see us sweating, it's 9 a.m., it's 32 <laughs> degrees, it's so hot. I try to put some sunscreen on, it's probably just melting down yeah. my face. <laughs> Great, yeah. So, we heard now how you felt during the whole process, if you had the support or not. Now, a personal thing about you... 
when you felt kind of lost or stuck in your journey, which you obviously did yeah, nice. when living abroad, having no real network yeah. around you, how did you overcome those phases? How did you deal with those problematical parts of your journey yeah. life back then? Two things. One, you got to make sure you give yourself time to relax. You know, when you're, you're, you're pressing, you're, you're going for it to be a digital nomad, you want to you know, conquer the world and get the views and get the subscribers. Whatever, actually, whatever, if you want to follow your dream, right? In if, any yeah, process, any, any process. Job. Yes, you're absolutely right. Give your, give your time, give your mind a minute to take a break. And for me, that meant walking through a city with my headphones on, just listening to music, you know, and just and sitting in a coffee shop. Mind, get right? lost in your mind. Think things through. The other way is I would spend a day sometimes laying in my bed in my, my apartment or hostel or wherever it was watching Netflix. That's necessary. Break myself all the way down. That's sometimes very necessary. And as long as you don't get stuck in that, mm -hmm. you know, I would do that. I say, okay, today you plan your mental breaks. Yeah. Because without that, you're just lazy. But if you plan your mental breaks, tomorrow I'm doing nothing. That gives your mind a moment to relax and reset. But then the most important thing, after you do that, sit down. I like to sit down with a physical book, book or journal and write down my why again. Why am I doing this? Yeah. What is my reason for making this happen? You write that down the following day and you go out and you get after it. But yeah. give your mind a moment, especially when you're going through such heavy, uncomfortable things like learning another language, like living abroad. You got to understand there's so much stimulation and living abroad, learning another language and trying to build a business. That's so much. So much. So it's time for another fun question. All right, give it to me. If you would have to move tomorrow abroad to another country, which country would it be and why? Not... George, Tbilisi, Georgia is one. Beautiful city. One year in Georgia. The other one would be where I'd want to learn the language. Oh, man, you stumped me on this one. Uh, South Korea. No, Vietnam. Vietnam, one year. Uh, beautiful country, amazing food, interesting culture. Those are my two answers. Great. Viet Vietnam and Georgia. Building your business, building your life abroad or on the road is very difficult. Yes. You have to be very disciplined. What did you do to grow your discipline, to be able to grow as a person and focus on all your goals while being on the road and on a constant move? Honestly, very simple. I write everything down. I write everything down in a notebook. I have daily to-do lists and I have you know big dreams for the year. And I feel like you set yourself up with your overall goal, right? What you want to become in one year or what you want to see yourself do in one year. And then you scale back and you break it down by day. So you have short-term goals, mid-term goals, long-term goals, exactly. and then daily tasks you have to fulfill. Execution. That's called action plan. I've talked once in a video about that, but very soon I want to make a whole video about action plans in general, how to plan your dream to... If you plan your dream, then it's no dream anymore. Then it's actually a goal or a plan, no? The most successful people on earth are not only dreamers, but they're doers. So if you can combine being a dreamer and a doer, and to me, the best way to do that is to articulate what it is the steps are to make things happen, you will be successful. Visualization is actually very important. Uh, when I started out, hey, Goran, I want to work on my goals. Mm -hmm. I bought a whiteboard in Medellin, put it on my wall every day in the morning when I woke up at 6 a.m. to work for my clients in Europe. Yeah. I always had this whiteboard with my goals, how to get there and yeah. why I want to do that. If you see that every day, you have the motivation automatically. Yeah. Visualization and execution. And by writing things down, I also use whiteboards at home, journals when I'm on the road. If you're more on the computer, that's fine too. I know there's apps and stuff that help you track that. But for me, visualization is, is good. Execution is even better. Yeah. Now we have been talking about your struggles, problems, obstacles, yes. discipline. Let's get to the good parts. Yes. What have been your biggest successes so far or best memories you made on your 14 year long journey as a travel vlogger, blogger, creator, everything you have made so far. I would have to start with Argentina as that maiden voyage, the first trip abroad, living abroad for a year without knowing Spanish, without knowing a soul. That was hands down the most successful thing I've ever done in my life because it was so hard. It was the first step. It was the most difficult. The one. most difficult step. You take that leap and everything else, you, can, you start gaining momentum, right? That was number one. The second huge pivotal moment was in Brazil. So after Argentina was the one-year goal, I made a five-year goal. And that was to live through Latin America. And dedication. Have huh? dedication. Five years. And finish. I had goals in every country. And the last one was to work at the World Cup in Brazil in 2014. And then go back to a regular job. <laughs> but what happens, just like in Argentina, I 
had the best year of my life. I got a local job working at the World Cup with a Australian tour operator who was bringing in 2,000 fans and they wanted me to shoot daily videos of 2,000 fans documenting their journey oh, that's amazing. throughout the World Cup. And also I got a job with the tourism board of Brazil traveling to 13 different cities. And so the actual campaign was to start their blog. They wanted to start a blog and based around all the cities where the World Cup was. So I would go there and I'd document the adventures for them. But at the same time, I filmed everything. He was living my dream. I'm a huge <laughs> football fanatic. Uh, you, he was living my dream, man. And so I filmed in 13 of these places. When I was getting paid to write, I also filmed. And that was the first real big series of the Travel Deeper series, was Travel Deeper Brazil. And still to this day, one of my absolute favorites. So let's get to the next question. What are your future goals? And are your goals changing constantly while you are growing as a person and as a business? The, the overall goal is the same, my why. And that's to share stories, authentic stories of travel and people to connect the world. That's to travel deeper is to gain a perspective on a place. So that continues to be the same. How I do that is evolving. Let's get to the last fun question. Okay. If you could take one celebrity on a random trip, on any trip where you want to go to, who would it be and why? Dead or alive? I don't care. Um, I mean, traveling with the dead is kind of strange, but feel free. Anthony Bourdain or Jesus? Uh, oh. <laughs> Imagine traveling with Jesus? You know, we could get in anywhere for free. Yeah, and your YouTube would grow so much faster. <laughs> if I was like, day in the life of Jesus video, that's got to get at least a million views, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're already coming to the end of this interview. Uh -huh. What would you recommend to people who want to start out as digital nomads, remote workers, business owners, who feel afraid in the whole process yeah. of insecurity and maybe even feeling they have no support? What yeah. is your message to them? How can they start and what could they do? It's hard for me to say for everybody else's situation because I know people are in you know different levels of opportunity but the best example I can give is think about what one year can do for you for me living abroad in Argentina opened my entire world up I learned more about myself my self-awareness went through the roof I learned about a foreign place I learned foreign language I learned foreign culture and new friends new business ideas new tactics new ways to see the world and in that same one year you could also be sitting at your job. So if you take just one year to just make the leap and, and go out and try to chase your dream, try to chase what really sets your heart on fire, you can always go back in one year to the life you had before. You can always go back. Even if you quit your job, I don't want to say there's always another job, but you can go back to a regular career. But one year of you chasing your dream will make you learn 10 times, 100 times what you would just going through the same motions you already know. So just think about the growth that will happen if you force yourself out of your comfort zone, if you force yourself to travel deeper. And that doesn't just mean go and travel the world and connect with local people. That means travel deeper within yourself as well. And the truth is, if you want it bad enough, and this is with anything, you'll find a way to make it happen. If not, you'll find an excuse, you'll find a way to delay it. But if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. And even if that means you keep your regular job and you work nights and weekends to save money, to set up a plan, to work out your business details, to work out your travel plans. It does, you don't have to just say, tomorrow I'm leaving, I'm cutting everything off. Cutting everything off. And you don't have to just say, here, tomorrow I'm cutting everything else off. You can work yourself. Say in six months, set a date. Six months. And so... I would highly recommend setting a date. Say six months from now, because that's what I did. In June, I bought a plane ticket for October 1st. And I said, you have June, July, August, September. You have four months to make your dreams happen. And with that, I had no other choice. Yeah, I agree. That's it. We have reached the end of this interview. I hope this was very valuable for you, that you have been able to connect to Gareth's story and his experiences. If you want to see more kind of these videos and digital nomad related stuff, feel free to hit that subscribe button, leave a like, comment, everything. Gareth, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you here. Absolutely. It's... Feel free to follow him as well. He will show you everything about my beautiful home country, Croatia. Thank oh, you much yeah. and see you in the next one. See you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's go to the beach.